Today we will be checking out the Salesforce Platform Developer 1 certification. We're going to get into all the details, look at the exam guide, take a look at the trail mix, and then also we're going to be looking at the focus on force study material as well. But if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm putting out new Salesforce content each week, and let's jump into this video. I just wanted to mention that I am actually studying for my platform developer certification right now. I started about five days ago. I'm really excited about this, and I'm actually using Focus on Force and Trail Mix as the study for the certification. In today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it looks like in Focus on Force if you plan on studying uh, the same way as I am. But I will make update videos in the future as I study for my certification and hopefully obtain my fourth Salesforce certification. So everything I'm talking about today is in the description of the video. And first we're gonna be looking at the exam guide on Trailhead's website. So like I said, this is for the Salesforce Certified Platform Developer 1 certification. Now scrolling down here, it talks a little bit about the certification. So this talks a little bit about the certification. So this certification is intended for individuals who have knowledge, skills, and experience in building custom applications on the Lightning platform. This credential encompasses the fundamental programming capabilities of the Lightning platform to develop custom business logic and interfaces to extend Salesforce using Apex, Visual Force, and basic Lightning components. Now to achieve this credential, a candidate must successfully pass the uh, platform developer exam. And the exam is also a prereq for the platform developer two certification as well. Now, taking a look at the audience description here. So the platform developer one candidate has the experience, skills, and knowledge outlined below. So you gotta be data-driven, um, has experience with object-oriented language such as Apex, Java, C Sharp, or Ruby. Now, I wouldn't say this is a requirement. I would say it is very good to know, and you may want to take maybe a C Sharp or Java class before starting this, but it is not an absolute requirement. Uh, you need to be familiar with government limits and their implications, have experience with uh, model view controller and VC and component-based architectures as well. Now, I'm not gonna go through every one of these. You can take a look at them for yourself, uh, but you just need to know the basics of Apex programming language. And if you don't, you're going to have to kind of learn this as you're going, um, going through studying for this certification as well. Now let's take a look about the exam here. So it is a 60 question multiple choice test and five are non-scored. They use that to develop future exams. You have 105 minutes to take the exam. The passing score is 68%. $200 the register and a $100 retake fee. So if you can pass it on the first try, that would be the best option. Just like all the other certifications, it is proctored online or you can register for an in-person exam as well. I've done all my certifications online and it's been a good experience, so I would recommend that. And of course, you can't have hard copy study material when you're studying or taking the exam. Now, they do offer some recommended training and resources. So you have the uh, trail and trail mix here. And you also have this super badge, Apex Specialist. I would highly recommend working on this as well. Um, that super badge will definitely help prepare you for this exam. They also have some Trailhead Academy courses as well that you could take if you would like. Um, these are um, expert leg courses that you can look into via Trailhead Academy. They also offer some additional resources here, all these links to different Apex reference guides, Lightning Web Components, Visual Force Developer Guide, and so forth. Now let's take a look at like how the exam is actually uh, broken out via the four sections. So the first section is the Developer Fundamentals, which is 23% of the exam. So you need to understand multi-tenant co concepts and design frameworks, such as MVC architecture and Lightning Component Framework. Give a scenario, identify common use cases and best practices for declarative versus pro, uh, programmatic customizations, including governor limits, formula fields, and roll-up summary fields. Also given a scenario, identify the options and considerations when importing and exporting data into development environments as well. Now, that's a, all the sections here, as you can notice, they're kind of broken out pretty evenly. Uh, so there's they're all very important sections. The next one you have here is process automation and logic. 
And I'll just kind of cover a couple of these. So you need to identify the capabilities of the declarative process automation features, think flow, process builder, and such. Declare variables, constants, methods, and use modifiers and Apex interfaces. And then given a scenario, identify the implications of governor limits on Apex transactions as well. The third section we have is user interface, which is 25% of the exam. Given a scenario, display content or modify Salesforce data using a visual force page and the appropriate controllers or extensions as needed. Given a scenario, display and use custom interface components, like including lightning components, flow and visual force. And also describe the use cases and best practices for LWCs, lightning web component events. And the last section we have here is testing, debugging and deployment. This is the smallest section at 22% of your exam, but still very important. So you need to write and execute tests for triggers, controllers, classes, flows, and processes using various sources of test data. Describe how to approach debugging system issues and monitor flow processes and asynchronous and batch jobs, etc. And then lastly, describe the environment's requirements and processes for deploying code in associated configurations. And then taking a look here, let's see if they have any more information for us. This is more code of conduct for taking the exam and how to maintain your certification. So this is all great information. There's a lot of links in here. So I would highly suggest if you're in, you know, thinking about taking this exam, come in here, check it out for yourself. One of the links I wanted to show you is the trail mix. I have it open here. So this is your pre uh, prepare for your Salesforce platform developer one credential. And, uh, you know, I've done a few of these myself, but this is a great trailhead to actually kind of dive in on for yourself and start, you know, preparing for the exam. Now I am using focus on force to study for my platform developer certification that I am taking. And as you can see, this is once you get in, you're looking at the study guide section, they have it broken out by each section. And let's just take the developer fundamentals, for example, here, you can hit your drop down and select the first section, and it will load up here for us. And whenever you come in here, it's got slides, we have a 17 minute video you can watch. And if you scroll down a bit more, there's 72 slides of information. So it tells you what you're going to study. Here's the intro, and it's talking about Salesforce multi-tenant architecture, cloud computing, shared resources, and so forth. They also offer practice exams, which is why I love Focus on Force. So I think the combination between doing the trailheads and using Focus on Force is a great combination for being able to pass this exam. So I'd highly recommend uh, using Focus on Force and the trail mix like I have if you're planning on taking your certification test as well. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave it a like so I know to make more videos like this in the future. I am really excited to be taking my platform developer certification and I'll make more videos in the future kind of updating you all on how it is going. And then when I take the exam and then you know passing the exam is the goal. So I'll make a video on that as well and kind of my review of the exam. Realistically, I think this is a probably a four to six month time frame for me, so it'll be a little bit before we have more update videos. But I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video, and I will see you in the next one.